Hi, so this is the installation video for the Babine WP6 home security system. So the first thing you want to do is go to Google Play and search for WP6 and you should see an application that looks like this by Kiri, K-E-R-U-I and it's named WP6 and you're going to install that and what I'm going to do here is open the app and now you're going to have to register here once you open the app. So I've opened the app and I'm not signed up. Make sure you're on your Wi-Fi so uh, just in case here you'll notice I am on my Willow 88A home Wi-Fi and I'm going to click on register. So once I, once I punch in my email I am simply going to click confirm and when I get a confirmation so what I'm going to do here is I am going to click add device and I'm going to choose the WP6 device and it's going to ask me for my Wi-Fi password here so what this is going to do is it's going to configure your Wi-Fi network and password onto this device such that this device can actually connect to your home network. So I've entered in my so I've entered in my password on for my home network and I'm going to click next. And now um as the direction says press hold and the music volume button for three seconds. So that's what I'm going to do. When you hear the voice prompt, click configure. So I'm going to put down my phone. And you'll notice here there are two buttons here the volume and the music button. And I am going to hold it down for three seconds, basically a long press. And you'll notice once that is once that occurs, this thing actually blinks red. I don't know if you could see that. Let me put my shadow on it so you see it's blinking red. So it's ready to be configured. And while that's happening, you push the configure button. and now I'm basically waiting for my phone to communicate with this device and configure it configure my home network and Wi-Fi password into this device so that it could connect to my home network you can see it's blinking red and it blinked blue now and you could see it found the device now once it finds the device I am going to click on this here and now it says it's binded hi so I'm going to go through all the features of this app and then also go through some of the quirks that I found with this system in general and also with the app so let me get started here and you'll notice after you've binded the device which is this device here so this device is the hub that actually connects to the Wi-Fi and also where these sensors connect here which connects to the your home Wi-Fi so this this thing here is the hub so the first thing you have to be aware of this thing is that it is also a motion detector so what will end up happening is if if you're not aware of of that that this is a motion detector you'll think that this thing randomly the alarm randomly goes on and off based on motion but you won't know that unless you realize this is a motion detector and I'll show you how to actually turn that off and some of the quirks with doing so in this app so let me go through the app first and so you'll notice here the device has already been binded to my home uh, home Wi-Fi network and you'll notice it says LAN online now if I actually went on 
uh, off of my Wi-Fi, my home Wi-Fi, and I actually went on 4G LTE internet, which is what I'm doing now. You'll notice now it says remote online. So you could access your home security system anywhere in the world um, as long as you have uh, internet connection. And in my case, I am controlling it right now through the 4G LTE. And that's also possible, but I'm, I'm just going to switch my Wi-Fi back on, my home Wi-Fi, and now it's back to LAN online. So you'll notice here, it actually supports multiple one of these devices. So for example, you might have one for your home, or you might have one for your vacation home, one for your primary home, or one for your office. So I am just going to go in to the device by clicking on the device. And let me go through the settings of the device first before I go through each one of these individual features. So I'm going to go through the settings by clicking on that gear. Now, when you're programming this, I suggest you either turn off the volume or turn it to one, which is the lowest, because this thing is so loud. Um, this is actually my fourth, fifth take trying to create this video. And um, I, I, I would say the even number three damaged my ears, you know, just in a sh those short beeps. It's, it's kind of like a fire alarm, but actually slightly louder. louder. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, go through each one of these uh, little settings here. So the first thing is the device name. So you could actually rename it by typing in its own name. I'm just going to click cancel because I don't want to rename it. You could also change the password uh, that connects to this hub here, this device. And the third thing here is the volume. So that's vol that's the lowest beep. I'm not going to... I have another video where I show the loudest beeps. Um, I'm not going to go through that here. I'm just going to click it to zero volume. And the way you know that this is the alarm is on is when this thing flashes. So, um, you know, I, I won't have to talk over the alarm uh, because I set the volume to zero. And of course, I could change it back to the loudest setting after I have have all this set. So the next thing is the alarm tone. And uh, th this is where I, I actually, I, I guess, have to change it to the volume. So I, I could choose from five, six, I, I think six tones or five tones. So the doorbell. So that's the doorbell. And the doorbell sound only will beep once, no matter how many time, or how long the duration is. So down here is the duration. I set it for five seconds. You could set it for as long as 600 seconds, which is five minutes or 10 minutes. Um, let, let me double check that. I think it is uh, 300 seconds actually. Yeah, 300 seconds, which is five minutes. So you could set the you could set the duration of how long the alarm goes on for five minutes, or or from from uh, zero seconds to uh, to five minutes. And the doorbell will only ever chime once, but every other every other one of these will will last five seconds or how, how long you set your duration to. So I'm going to click on the classic. And so that's the noise of the classic. And so the other thing you can do is actually on the remote control, because I already have appeared, there's an S here, which toggles through the sound. So every time you push this, it changes the sound. So you could also change it using this remote. Now, um, the actual instructions says this is some other button, but um, you'll notice with an S it just stands for sound. So there was some misinformation in the directions. So for example, I'm going to click this and you'll see that change. You, you see that noise change. Change it to harsh. And um, I'm just going to... And then there's just one more, which is the tone. And then when I click it once more, 
that's the doorbell. So I am going to turn off the volume and uh, go through these other settings. So that was the tone. This here, alarm time is the duration, language is the language, host time. Now you have to be aware of this host time because when you set when you set a schedule for when this thing should turn on and off, it has to go by this time, not your local time. So this time is um, actually it's 12 hours ahead, which, which is, uh, you know, in, instead of my 1 a.m. in the morning. So the next setting is actually the L LED switch. So for example, uh, you'll, you'll notice wh when I Actually, I don't think this is armed. Let me go to the settings and check. You see that is unarmed. So I am actually going to arm it. And um, you'll notice I actually got a notification that the alarm is armed. And you'll see that uh, be, that was the motion detector and I got an extra notification. I'm going to go back in here and turn it off. So the way to turn off the motion detection is to go to sensor, go to the last option of panel PIR and turn it off. So now the motion detection is off. And I am going to go back into my settings here so I could talk about it. And actually I will set a sound. Why not? I'll, I'll set it to tone. So that will be the alarm sound and it will be at the lowest noise. And let me go to the settings. So for example, the next setting I want to demonstrate is the LED switch, which is simply this light. So you notice when I alarm it, this light turns on. And if I turn off that LED switch, that light will not turn on when I trigger the alarm. And so I'm just going to turn it back on here. And what these things are, so there is a terminology issue with just the app itself and also with the instructions. Anytime you see the word control, it simply means Web, so you'll see the word or phrase control switch a lot. Control switch simply means on or off. Whether this each one of these sensors is on and off or whether the remote is on or off or whether it's enabled or disabled. So control you could think of as enable or disable. Whereas push, what push means is a notification. So do you want these notifications being sent to your phone? when events occur, when an alarm event occurs, or when you push a button on, you know, one of these remotes. So the next setting here is AC recovery push, AC disconnect push. So what that is, I believe is if the electricity is turned off or back on, do you want a notification going to your phone? So I have these all, you know, um, choices as yes. Uh, the third one here is low battery push. So again, just think of that as low battery notification to the phone. And then there's these other notifications that you could turn on and off. Do you want a notification when it's armed, when it's disarmed, when someone uses the remote control button, when uh, you use the app to arm or disarm? And so those are what the push means. It's the notifications. And then the one here means um, battery power. So I am using the USB electrical and I actually don't have batteries in here. Otherwise, it, if, if this is disconnected and I'm merely using batteries, it'll just say battery there. And then the last, lastly, it just says host version here, which is 1.5. So those are the explanations for all the settings. Now I am going to go through these icons here. So this first one here is just simply what is the power source. So this is a USB charging. Um, the other one here is the sensor. 
So the sensors are, you know, these things, the things that uh, triggers the alarms. And then the third thing is the remote. The alarm clock is, you could actually set this to go off like it would an alarm clock. So for example, I, I could set it to, to alarm uh, at a certain time or day of the week. So actually like an alarm clock, uh, which is a, you know, sort of an odd feature. And this timing arm, so the timing arm is setting a schedule for when you want this to arm or disarm. So um, once again, these things control switch. Control switch simply means enable or disable. So if I, I created some schedule here, so if I wanted to add another schedule, I, I could add the schedule, day of the week. I, I could say just, um, you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, you know, and not Sundays, or, or just Mondays, you know, all the way to or just, just the weekdays, and then say to arm at a certain time. And keep in mind, this has to be set to the host time that was in the gear, that, that was in that other screen, uh, meaning, you know, this time, not your local time. Uh, so that's what timing alarm is. And once again, you could turn on and off each one of these or all of them at the same time. Um, delay alarm. So anytime you turn this on, you could, when you arm this alarm, you could delay it by a series of seconds or minutes. And this is what this option is for. You could choose, you know, to, you, you might arm it and you might need to, you know, get out of your house in the next minute without triggering it. Uh, so you might want to arm it that way by having a delay. So that's what this is. And um, actually, I'll set it to 10, 10 seconds because I want to show you that in a demo. So I set that to 10 seconds now. All right, now I'm going to show you how to set up the sensors. So I'm going to go into sensors here. And you'll notice I have the one, two, and three set, and these things are not set. So lots of times I just like to turn them off when, when they're not set. So you could actually see. And you'll notice the terminology here, control switch. That's, that simply means whether you want this sensor to be enabled or disabled after it's been added to the system. Push notifications for that sensor. Do you want a notification to your phone when an event happens, uh, such as when uh, the uh, alarm is triggered for that sensor. So um, let me go ahead and I, I, I am going to delete these. So I've deleted that, deleted this one, and I'm going to delete this one. And, and the way I like to set it is simply to remove these. So I, I am going to I'm going to remove these here. And what I'm going to do now is um, add them. So initially, when you first bind this, all of these might be added. Just delete all of them. Just delete all of them and redo them. So I am going to add them. And I'm going to add. So now it's going to wait for me to add. I simply have to activate it like that. And you'll notice right away that changed right away that changed and um, you know so that one's added now I'm gonna do the second one I'm gonna click add put the sensor in and you see it detected it and right here change to add so I'm gonna do the third one here take my sensor my magnet I mean and then it's added so once again, these buttons are whether I want a notification or not. So I am going to do an example here where for this particular one or for this middle one, I am going to, I have it set to have a notification. So you'll notice once I set the alarm, you'll see I got a notification. So, so let me just put this back. You'll see I got a notification here that says number alarm two alarmed. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to turn off the notification. So I've turned off the notification and I am going to alarm it. 
So that alarmed. You'll notice that alarmed, but I didn't get a notification on my phone. So that's what that button is. Now I'm going to turn off the alarm for the second sensor. And you'll notice it alarmed. You see it turned red there. But this didn't alarm. So that's what this control switch is. Enable or disable the, you know, the um, sensor. So the quirk I wanted to show you is anytime you enable or disable these things, it just resets all your settings. So I am going to go into my remote. And also, even if you did it with a timer, so for example, in this screen where I have the timer arm, meaning I'm running this on a schedule, it resets this all the time. So for example, what ends up happening is it's really this part with turning off the motion detector. So every time this thing automatically arms or disarms, I'm going to have to turn off the motion detector. But for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, you know, somewhere in the basement in the corner or something where there's no motion, face it in the corner. And so there will no, never be any motion that it's going to detect. So that's how I'm going to handle that uh, issue with this. I hope they just fix the app and not reset all of your settings. So let me demonstrate that quirk that happens. Um, and once again, it's regardless of whether you use the remote or whether it's triggered by programming the timer or, and schedule on this app. So I am going to go into sensor here. And what I'm going to do with the sensor is I am simply going to, and, and keep in mind this here is the motion detector. And you'll see my settings here is what they are. Now I am going to disarm this. And now you see everything was disarmed. You see this is disarmed. I even got a notification saying it's disarmed. And now I'm going to rearm it with this button by pushing here. And it's going to count down for 10 seconds because that's the delay I had was that the 10 second delay. So that was the 10 seconds and you'll see what it did. It turned everything on like some of these settings are what they were but a lot of these weren't. You'll see the last one has the motion detector on. So for example, I've set off the motion detector. And you'll see I, I moved ever so slightly and it detected my motion. So I'm going to turn that motion detector off. And I'm going to turn these other ones off like I have and, and just have these on. So that is the quirk of this system, which is a little bit annoying. I hope they just fix that aspect of, of the app. So let me show you the other stuff here. That's the sensors. And I'm going to go into remote control. And the remote control is the same exact way. I am going to delete my remotes here. And I'm going to re-add them by clicking on add. And then I'll take this one and you just have to trigger anything on it. So I'm just going to click, I'm just going to click, uh, you know, any one of these buttons. And you'll see it triggered it. Now I'm going to add the second remote, same way. Just push any one of the buttons and you see it's added. And once again, these are notifications and that's whether the remote control is even enabled or disabled. That's no different than with the sensors. Um, so these are, I'm going to turn off notifications, uh, meaning that anytime I use the remote, it's not going to send a notification to my phone saying I armed it or disarmed it with the remote. Um, and the control switch is, you know, whether this is even operational for that. Now, the, these things don't need a line of sight. So I was four rooms away and I pushed enable, disable, and it worked as expected. Um, now, once again, there is that quirk when, when you do the enable and disable.
um, you know, that it's going to trigger that weird thing with, you know, uh, having the settings reset. Um, but that's really it. That is, um, I, I guess, a comprehensive guide to the app itself and how to set up the system and some of the quirks that are within it. Now, there is a master switch here to arm and disarm the that uh that hub now i'm gonna i do want to demonstrate just um you know going to 4t lte 4g lte i mean i'm gonna clear these and i'm gonna i'm gonna disable the alarm or disable the alarm and you'll see it's disabled and i did that from 4g lte and you'll notice i got a I, I got a notification here that says it's disarmed. Now I'm going to arm it again. And keep in mind, I'm doing this basically anywhere in the world because I'm on 4G LTE. Now that beep, what that beep means is there's a 10 second delay because I delayed the alarm by 10 seconds with this delay here. I, I could always set that to zero, in which case it just turns on immediately. So it's armed now. And once again, if I go into sensors, it reset everything. What you see there is the motion detector being triggered. And once again, I am simply going to put this in a corner or even cover the motion detection on this thing with tape or something such that it doesn't turn on uh, because it's so annoying. I wish it was just a hub. Um, but it wouldn't even be an issue if, if this thing if this thing didn't just have the settings reset every time you arm and disarm this thing. So uh, that's really it. That That's really what I wanted to show. And I hope this was uh, it's a little bit long-winded, but I hope it was informational. And uh, please subscribe and thank you for watching.